Cheddar Gorge is a limestone gorge formed from glacial meltwater and contains many caves. Britain's oldest complete human skeleton called Cheddar Man, estimated to be over 9,000 years old, was found in one of the caves in 1903. Other remains dating back 13,000 years have been found in the gorge area. The maximum depth of the gorge is 449 feet, with a near vertical cliff face to the south and steep grassy slopes to the north. There are 350 officially graded rock climbing routes on the 27 cliffs that make up Cheddar Gorge. The village of Cheddar lies at the western end of the gorge area. It was an important commercial site during the Saxon and Roman times. The village gave its name to Cheddar Cheese, which is the most popular cheese in the UK. However, there is only one local cheese company still making Cheddar Cheese. We visited this company to learn how the cheese is made. The entire process is quite interesting and very labor intensive. The longer the cheese ages, the stronger the flavor. Some cheddar is aged in caves that gives it a distinctive flavor. Leaving Cheddar, we arrived in the town of Wales and enjoyed browsing its market. The highlight of our visit to Wales was the cathedral, which was England's first completely Gothic cathedral, dating from about 1200 AD. The vast screen fronting the cathedral on the west side has been a large cemetery a cricket pitch, a grazing field for cattle, and is now used by hundreds of picnicking visitors. The west facade of the cathedral displays almost 300 original 13th century carvings. Cromwell's forces destroyed the carvings in the lower niches, and they are now vacant. As you enter the cathedral and glance down the nave, the first thing you will notice is how much light is admitted by the upper row of windows. The second thing you will notice is the unique hourglass-shaped double arch that was added in 1338 to support the weight of the bell tower. Since this was not a monastery church, it was not destroyed in the Reformation. The North Transit contains a clock dating from 1390 that on the quarter hour displays a joust between two riders. The upper corner of the North Transit contains a 14th century carving of Jack Blandiver who strikes the bell to mark the quarter hour. The North Transit also contains the stairs to the chapter house which has a beautiful fan vaulted ceiling. The chairs in the choir area contains embroidery work that celebrates the hometowns of church officials. High above the east end of the choir is the tree of Jesse window that depicts the lineage of Jesus. This stained glass window depicts the Beatitudes. The rear apse of the cathedral contains the Lady Chapel. The original stained glass windows in this area were destroyed by Cromwell's troops and were restored in a haphazard way. This old Saxon baptistry bell, found in the south transit, survives from the previous church and dates from 705 AD. The capitals in the south transit are decorated with many whimsical carvings such as this one. 
We visited the library and history room off the South Transit to investigate one of Vicky's relatives, John de Ripon, who was an archdeacon in the 1300s. We enjoyed listening to the choir group practice for a performance. We also enjoyed walking the cloister area that was constructed in the 13th century and later rebuilt from 1430 to 1508. Exiting the cathedral, we circled around it to the north to view the Vicar's Close, which houses church officials. Built in the 14th century, it is the oldest continuously occupied street in Europe. We then visited the Bishop's Palace that is adjacent to the cathedral. Built in the 13th century, it is the residence of the Bishop of Bath and Wells. The palace is surrounded by a large moat that provides an opportunity for a peaceful walk while observing the beautiful swans that inhabit the moat. You can tour the inside of the Bishop's Palace, but we chose to relax and watch a game of croquet being played on the palace grounds. Glastonbury Abbey was established in the 7th century and was the first Christian sanctuary in the British Isles. Tradition has it that Joseph of Arimathea built a simple place of worship here. Because of that legend, Glastonbury grew rich and powerful as it drew more pilgrims than any other site in Britain. In 1184, there was a devastating fire. During Reconstruction, the tomb and bodies of King Arthur and Queen Guinevere were discovered. This discovery drew even more pilgrims and increased the wealth of the Abbey. The Lady Chapel may be the oldest part of the church. Other than the Abbot's kitchen, more of the Lady Chapel remains than any other part of the Abbey. The Abbot's Kitchen is the only complete structure that still remains of the original Abbey. The Abbey itself was the largest in Britain and was larger than any building in Europe north of the Alps. The nave measured 580 feet long. In 1539, Henry VIII ordered the destruction of this Abbey. Wandering through the remains of this magnificent building, one can only imagine what the Abbey would look like if it had survived the anger of Henry VIII. Construction of Nunn Castle was begun in 1373 by Sir John Delamare after he returned from France fighting in the Hundred Years' War. The castle design is French and contains four symmetrically arranged towers surrounded by a water-filled moat Centered between the four towers were three floors of living areas. The castle remained in the Delamare family for only three generations, after which it went through a succession of several different owners. The Prater family, who were Catholic, owned the castle when the English Civil War erupted. After being heavily damaged by cannon, the castle was surrendered to Oliver Cromwell's forces in September of 1645. The castle was restored to the Prater family after Charles I was reinstated as king. After a long period of disuse, the North Wall collapsed in 1910 and local citizens made off with many of the stones. The Church of All Saints in Nunny was constructed in the 12th century 
It is the burial site of several owners of the castle, including Sir John Delamore, who built the castle, and Richard Prater, who surrendered the castle to the forces of Oliver Cromwell. The effigy at the top is Sir John Delamore, Lamar, who built the castle. He died in 1383. On the far right is Sir John Paulette, who died in 1437, and his wife Constance. On the left is Richard Prater, who bought the manor in 1577, and his wife.